guys, how you doing? It's Henry. I'm over the phone. Good morning. It is definitely earlier than uh, I usually wake up at, and uh, the reason behind that is because today my dog Boba went to get a new one, and uh, he went to a place in Medford. That's right. He went to get neutered at Nick from Medford's house. He's got a sharp knife. No, I'm just kidding. So uh, I was very anxious about it because uh, I know it seems kind of ridiculous, but uh, I'm so attached to that dog, you know what I mean? I, I worry about him going into surgery, you know? And honestly, in the beginning, I, I honestly didn't think it was really necessary to cut his balls off, you know what I mean? It's a house dog. He's not going to overpopulate the country or something like that, you know what I mean? But... Uh, I guess it's good for his health, for uh, testicular cancer and all that stuff, but uh, I just found it unnecessary, but I guess it's the right thing to do, but I'm, I'm very nervous, you know what I mean? So uh, today, I was going to go and do the uh, blacktop seal coating for my new driveway that I did about a year ago, and they recommended that I get it coated, seal coated, for the winter for the first time after it's been installed. So I've been calling around, trying to find a good price and stuff, and uh, the best price I found was like $150 for the size of my driveway, including the walkway from the driveway to the, to the gate. There's an extra section over there, right? And so uh, <laughs> I was watching a bunch of YouTube videos about seal coating, and uh, I thought it was only going to take one five-gallon jug of stuff, and that only cost like $20, you know what I mean, from Home Depot. Then I buy the squeegee broom for another $10, and then maybe the mixer for five dollars, you know what I mean? So the whole thing probably would have <clears throat> only cost me like maybe 40, 50 bucks, you know what I mean? So why not try to do that instead of pay 150? Not to mention the fact that I'd like to try it, you know what I mean? But then I was watching these YouTube videos and those dudes were like using one pail to just cover a uh, five by 10 area. Well, I mean, if you look at my driveway, I'll probably need like five jugs. So five jugs is like $120, right? $125. And then if the whole thing ends up costing me $150, well, why not just have somebody do it, right? And they'll do a way better job than me for sure, you know? So I called some local guys. I'll probably end up having them do it, you know? Uh, I'll do a video on it. And I told them, hey, I'll do a video on it if you cut me a good deal. Plus, cash is king. It's a cash sale. And they're like, hmm. You know what I mean? So uh, I'll see what happens with that. In the meantime, my neighbor Scott from down the street, he's the parallel house next block. Uh, I've worked on this before, right? So he told me, hey, Henry, I, I need my snowblower tuned up. And while he knows every time I work on his thing, I never charge him any money for it, you know, because he's my neighbor, right? And so he says he was just about to take it to a repair shop, and he says, but he really wants me to do it. If I promise to take money from him. So I said, yeah, yeah, I'll do it, okay? Anyway, so uh, just check the oil. The oil is clean and it's it needs some oil. So I'm not going to do an oil change on it because it's, it's clean, you know? It, it's like spotless. And so I'm just going to fill up his oil. And I remember from last year, I did his carburetor. And his carburetor, uh, I didn't take it off. I did a quick and dirty and it got it running, right? but he needs a thorough cleaning, maybe an entire carburetor replacement, which I have, you know? So uh, we'll see what happens, and then I'll uh, I'll go and replace the carburetor if so, and I'll just charge him for the carburetor, you know what I mean? So let's start it up right now and see if it works. So this is a decent snowblower that Yard Machine makes. It's actually the bigger one. So it's a Yard Machine's by MTD. That's right, MTD sucks, but this actually has a decent 8 horsepower Snow King Tecumseh engine in it, 24 wide, 6.4, 2 reverse as normal. Also has a handle, you never find the handle on any of these. It has electric start, it has some ass gas in it, I'm pretty sure he didn't drain it over the uh, win uh, summer. Full choke, high throttle. And it doesn't seem to be priming, which means the carburetor is probably clogged. I don't feel any liquid going. Uh, I don't. I feel air, but I don't feel any liquid going to the carburetor. Ooh, some kind of a crinkling, rattling thing. So 
Sounds like there's a screw loose. <laughs> I got a screw loose. Well, now that sound has gone away. The rattling screw is what it sounded like. So it does not start. How about that? That's interesting. So it's only been an hour or so and the vet called and says that boba surgery was successful and he's in recovery and I have to go with my wife to Medford to go pick him up because I have to drive and she has to like kind of hold him in the back seat, you know. Anyway, look, it doesn't start because I don't feel any priming. So I'm going to take the, uh, I'm going to take some contact cleaner from my friends over at Luke's. Spray some go go juice in there and see if uh, we can get some spark see if it starts up and whether or not it's just a dirty carburetor and a dirty clogged primer. Just sprayed some. Choke. As you guys could see, it starts up just fine with some primer, which means that the primer bulb hose is clogged with something or the carburetor is just gunky, especially with the primer hole in there, uh, the primer jet. So it's not able to prime fuel into the carburetor to get it started. You have to help it out with some spray. Once started, it runs well on choke and half uh, choke, but then when you start turning it towards full run. with The choke flap almost completely off, it starts to surge, and with the throttle bringing it down halfway, it stalls. Which means you have a dirty carburetor, okay? However, I am a little concerned about that rattling screw noise that when I was pulling this, you could hear it, you know? And then it went away, meaning that it almost sounds like the screw fell out somewhere. Or is no longer touching an area that is making a sound. I hear that sound again. You see that? You hear that? Now it goes away again. I don't know what that sound is. I've never heard that sound before. Now I don't hear it, but it, it's almost like it's part of a recoil, you know? Now it's not there anymore. Choke it again and see. All right, well, anyway, first things first. We're gonna remove the entire carburetor from this assembly because we just gotta get, a, get to the bottom of it, you know, and I will. Let's put this thing on its service position. Maybe we'll find out what that noise is. I'm actually kind of nervous because I hope the noise isn't inside the engine. You know what I mean? Could it be like the cap to the valves? But would it run if the valve, if the cap was off the valves? You know what I mean? So anyway, let's get that, uh, let's get that carburetor off, huh? I forgot, we're not doing a quick and dirty. If you want to do a quick and dirty, you put it on the service position. It was leaking gas from the gas tank being on that position, so it's got a decent amount of fuel in it. We're gonna remove the entire carburetor today, so I'm gonna take the entire assembly off, put it back on its uh, regular side again. And we have a uh, 5 16 over here. It's barely on there can hand tighten it or hand loosen it. A little baby squirrel just fell from my tree, lied there for two minutes or so and then climbed back up the tree again. 
that's one hell of a drop though. I mean, for the little guy. Muffler's hot. There's another 5 16 on this side to hold the, uh, it's called the heater box. Heater box is on here to protect the carburetor and also isolate the hot air to keep the carburetor um, from freezing. Pull this knob out, just like that, and then weasel this cover off. You could just let it hang or you can disconnect the uh, key kill switch over here. I just let it hang. So the easiest way to remove this carburetor, Tecumseh, right, is to remove the intake manifold, which is right here. There are uh, torque screws, torque bits. Need an extension for that. Just happen to have one right here. And now the linkages. You got the uh, fuel hose going over here. You got one linkage going over there. It's a Z bend. You got the primer hose coming out of here. There's the primer hose right there. Now fuel is going to leak out, so I need to go get a clamp. Got a needle vice grip over there. Remove the hose clamp. Weasel off the fuel line. Because the fuel line's just sticking out a little bit, it's kind of difficult to grab a hold of it and pull it out. really hard this uh, fuel hose this fuel line here as you can see it was so stubborn it wouldn't come off it's very brittle so I unfortunately have to replace the entire fuel line coming from here to the fuel tank probably needs a change anyway anyway the linkage is right here just remember where it is this hole right here the one on the right Z-bend, it comes off right there. So remember, it's right there, the dark circle is where it goes. Let's remove the uh, bowl nut over here and see how bad the uh, carburetor bowl is. Half inch wrench to take the uh, jet nut out. Jet nut is clear, hole is clear. As you can see, there's some debris inside. There he goes, right here. See that? The black thing here? That's part of the fuel line. So you knew the fuel line was starting to collapse already because um, the rubber is deteriorating and shredding and making its way into the bowl, which in turn clogs the jets. Inside is actually not very dirty. So I think what was preventing uh, it from starting with Prime is that that little black thing was clogging this jet. I'm gonna blow out all the holes here. And actually, you see that there's a um, little black little stopper in there. I'm gonna remove that black stopper in there, right? and uh, unscrew the um, main, uh, that's not the main jet, the um, uh, idler, the low speed jet right there. This is the idler screw. That's a low speed jet in there. I'm gonna take that out and blow it out too. 
Let me go get some carb cleaner. Take a little screwdriver here. I'm taking this little black stopper off. I know I'm going to lose it. There it is. I'm just going to let it fall. There it is. As you can see, there's a screw right there. It's a fixed jet. It goes in all the way. It doesn't loosen or tighten. It's just fixed. And there it is right there. Looks pretty clear. Contact cleaner, Lucas Oil Products. This doesn't blow up gaskets. Now the hole is clear. Took the uh, float off too. I'm gonna blow stuff into this hole. I'm also gonna blow inside the primer nozzle. Because remember, we had difficulty getting um, it to prime. There's a small little hole right there that nobody knows about. But it seems to be clear because um, carb spray's coming out of it. Up the emulsion tube, the main jet. Welsh plug. A lot of varnish around the choke flap. There's a hole. You're not gonna be able to see it, but there's a hole right there. Ooh, son of a gun, right in my face. Spraying the jet nut out. Good thing I wear glasses, otherwise my eye would have been stinging. There's a super small hole over here, you can hardly see it. It's got these torch tip cleaners, see? Make sure this hole is clear. And the super small one there, look at that, goes all the way through. Super small hole right there. Can't even see it. Clear. So, we blew this out completely. Welsh, motion, um, seat is good, blows freely. Cleaned out that uh, fixed jet right there. And that is it. I'm gonna shove that jet back in there. Remember, we have to replace the hose, the fuel line, because it's, because the fuel line is done! I'm gonna put all this stuff back again. I'm uh, draining the gas from the gas tank. Taking the clamp off the other side pulling this fuel line out and I recall that it is such a pain to get this fuel line fished back in that crevice again so this is going to probably take me all day because I've done it before several times and it always was a pain in the balls see if you barely pull it out how am I going to put it back in you know that area in there is so small difficult to fish it in there anyway I'm gonna find a uh, new hose and cut it to just the same exact length there's quite a bit of fuel in here huh and it looks like it has some stable in there got a new fuel line here cut the size match the original one look how much gas was in it crazy huh that's a lot of gas so now I'm going to try to fish this thing in there. Uh, 
looks like it's slowly dripping out, right? And uh, fuel is finally stopped. I'm gonna try to fish this line in there, in between the starter. I think I might have to remove the starter just to get it in there. We'll see what happens. Maybe I'll try to do it from the other side. Look at that, you move it around, it still wants to come out. I just, I just could not get that, that hose in there, so I had to remove the gas tank. And I still can't see the hose. It's unbelievable how, how, how tight it is in there. I mean, I hope I don't have to take the whole damn engine apart just to get it through there, you know what I mean? But with the fuel tank off, it seems like it's a little bit easier. At least I don't have to take the uh, starter off. That would be a nightmare. But yeah. Ooh, looks like it's slowly getting through there. I got it, I think. I got it. It's through there. So I put everything back, and I'm just putting a couple of uh, cups of this fuel back in there. You know what? Even that one cup is enough. Let's see if it starts. Still don't feel any fuel in the primer. I wonder if the primer's good. car but it still kind of surges I think I might try to put a new carburetor in there so I've got this new carburetor in stock it is for the five horsepower or higher kind this is an eight horsepower one it has the straight fuel nozzle that comes out just like that one this is a direct replacement to it Chinese copy so I'm just going to replace this carburetor and see if it runs a little bit better.
out of whack, you know, it wasn't priming right. This new carburetor I just installed, lower the idle a little bit to the idle screw here. As you can see, it doesn't surge anymore. It now primes with the primer button at full throttle, no surge. And shuts off no problem so that was it it just needed a new carburetor is all so uh, that was pretty cool we replaced the uh, fuel line replaced the carburetor completely we had to disassemble a lot of stuff just to get the fuel line through there but uh, it wasn't too bad you know and that that clanking stomach I, I still don't know what that sound was you know but it obviously is not an interior engine problem otherwise it wouldn't run so well you know had to be something on the recoil starter maybe maybe something just maybe a twig or something i don't know but it's gone now so uh i'm gonna put this back together when i come back I'm gonna pick up pick up boba now oh my. we just got back from uh, medford and uh boba is fine he's a little groggy and uh we just got home and uh while i was driving from medford it's about a half hour drive quinn the mill <laughs> texted me and said that there's a push mower a block away from here so as soon as we got home and saw that Bobo was okay I jumped into my van because remember you got a hustle and about a half hour has passed already so I don't know if I'll get this or not but uh, it's only a block away and we'll see if uh, it's still there As a matter of fact it's so close it's right here let's see I don't see nothing yet. Should be right on this uh, street there. Oh, I see it. Has a bagger. You guys see that? It's a Toro Recycler. Scores! Recycler. Um, quantum engine. I don't know. Why would he throw it away, you know? I think I've seen the guy use it, you know? One thing I can think of is... It seems fine. Let's roll it to the driveway. The only thing I could see was uh, this was off by one notch on the height. No gas. Earl's good. What do you think? Should we put some gas in there and see if it starts up just for the hell of it? Let's put some gas in there. And just give her a rip. Uh, Auto choke. Wait, let's see underneath if there's a blade. Uh huh. There is a blade. Blade's kind of trash. some fluid in there and see just to see if it probably just needs a carb clean but I want to see if it starts get spark and all that decent decent and it is on choke so the auto choke should work spray a little bit oh you know what look that's probably why it didn't start
RPM seems a little low, doesn't it? Just bend this tab a little bit more that way. How about that, huh, guys? Still could use a little bit more. Shine this up and list it for 150. Bagger, self-propelled, quantum engine, auto choke. Works fine. Unbelievable, right? I don't know, man. Sometimes you just don't understand what people do. Um, probably use a carb cleaner and stuff, but pour some of that deep clean in there and see what happens tomorrow. You know, but I'll put this aside and finish up on the snow blower. Deep clean, fuel cleaner. Just a little drop. Let it percolate overnight. See how it runs tomorrow. I uh, got a couple of birds in my uh, garage and they won't leave. Ooh, I think that one's gone. So I'm back to the snowblower now. What do you guys see here? Scott, I don't know what you've been doing, baby. You've been running them into the side of the road or something? It's all bent out of shape, bro. Okay, you can bend this part slightly. You need... feel much better now. Got to put this bracket off of the old one, put it back on the new one. cover back on that coincide with these holes over here on the bracket I just put on and a bunch of other screws where is that screw always looking for screws oh look you think this was the cause of the recoil starter making that clinkly noise came right out of there sitting right there that was the noise. So there's a nail right where the recoil starter was that was making that noise. Problem solved. So 
I'll just tighten up these bolts and add some new Earl into this baby. And Scott, your snow blower is ready for the harsh winter that awaits us. So I checked the oil. There's almost no oil in here. It's really weird. We're putting SAE 5W30 because this is a winter machine for temperatures below 32 degrees. <laughs> or some somewhere is around there. It's not an exact science. <laughs> Oil guys would be like, sure it's an exact science. Give or take a few degrees here and there. A few weight here and there. Just fill it and check the levels every few goes. From my friends over at Lucas Oil. Final thing is put this put this knob back on. Got oil in it now. It's right on the money. Got full choke, full throttle. Got gas in it. Build up the oil. Bet the front bucket back into shape. Prime. Snowbird is now completely tuned up. It's ready for the winter. The snowblower is from my neighbor Scott. Hope you're satisfied with the work that we did today. It was fun to get into a snowblower for a change, you know what I mean? After all, I am mowers and blowers, you know what I mean? You gotta do a blower once in a while. Thanks a lot for joining me on today's episode, guys. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Mailbag. Got a couple of packages today, actually three packages. Uh, shout out to Willie Coates from Wareham, Massachusetts for buying three stickers. Dunsky sticker, flag sticker, and the regular conventional kind. Got this box here, don't know what it is. It's kind of heavy. Holy cow. Look at this. Orange goop. Rough towels. Hand towels. An orange goop waterless hand cleaner. How about that, huh? I guess they wanted me to try the product on camera. Thank you very much. Uh, I went to go get Boba, my dog, so I washed my hands, and then I came back and just did a little bit on that snowblower, and my hands aren't dirty enough. I want to wait until I really get my hands dirty, greasy and grimy and really dirty for me to try this goop out, all right? So this is going to be put somewhere over here, and I will get to it in the next video, because I guarantee you my hands are going to be filthy in my next video. I have this... Um, box over here from clean products Yukon Oklahoma hey, hey boomer sooner you know for those people over at clean 
Uh, I was born in Oklahoma, Norman. My dad got his PhD from the University of Oklahoma. So did my aunt. My aunt got her master's degree from Oklahoma. How about that? Mindy Kern, Vice President of Operations over at Joe's Hand Cleaner over in Yukon, Oklahoma. You know, Mindy tells me that uh, this company has been in her family for over 70 years. She's a third generation uh, member of this company. And uh, I gotta tell you, you gotta, you gotta be proud of that, right? To survive in the family business for that long, that's something to be said. But uh, thank you for sending me this. We're gonna try, ooh, look at this. Joe's Hand Cleaner. Snapback, mesh, trucker hat, embroidered. Thank you very much. Ooh, I love swag. You know, if you guys have swag that you'd like for me to wear, you guys know I'm always wearing these old t-shirts when I wrench. Wouldn't you like me to advertise your company during the entire video? Anyway, I'm a size medium. I used to be a large, but all this wrenching, I lost a lot of weight. So here's an extra large t-shirt. Mindy says, sorry, I should have asked you what size. But uh, I'm sure you'll send me a medium someday. Joe's Hand Cleaner. When I uh, try these products out in my next video, I'm going to wear your shirt, Mindy. Thank you. Joe's Hand Scrub Hand Cleaner. Joe's All-Purpose Hand Cleaner. Contains lanolin. Joe's Hand and Surface Quick Wipes. Awesome. Ooh. In our COVID era, we've got some Joe's Instant Hand Hygiene. Thank you very much, Mindy. I will be sure to try your product first tomorrow because you gave me a hat and t-shirt. I'll try the uh, orange goop stuff in my next video. And uh, I'll let you know which one does a better job on cleaning the grease and also not leaving your hands all chafed due to the winter weather now arising. And also us wrenchers, I didn't say mechanic, I said wrenchers and flippers, make sure our hands don't chafe too much, you know, from getting our hands dirty so much and also using soap and water really dries out the hands. But thank you very much for the product. I'll be sure to try it very soon.